Hello everyone, my name is Hassan. I'm a professor at the San Diego State University, Department of Civil Construction and Environmental Engineering. Welcome to Stormwater Management and Green Infrastructure. So today I'm going to have an overview of the course and see what we're going to learn in this class. So of course, like many other courses, we first start with the history of stormwater management and the genesis behind it, like why we're doing this. So stormwater management history and the part that we're doing it on the enforcement and uh, engineering aspects and the industry aspects it focuses on the regulations right regulations so we need to comply with them and then uh, the whole world of designing things and, and monitoring things happen to be able to do this and comply with the regulations, we need to know the necessary techniques. Basically, airborne water hydrology and hydraulics, or the term H and H. So these help mostly with the quantity size of things like how much water we get in terms of volume, what's the peak flow, and how to uh, manage it and divert some part of it uh, to be able to avoid any flooding. So this can help a lot with the flood control part of it. We need to know that the focus on urban water here is that, uh, the reason is that uh, all the concepts that we learned in traditional textbooks for hydrology and hydraulics, those mostly focus on natural watersheds. Uh, all those estimations for time of concentration, for example, hair pitch formula and all those stuff, they assume that uh, there is a natural watershed with the ability of infiltration and water is just going to the route that it should go. But in the urban water world with a tiny culvert, we can reroute the entire watershed uh, to somewhere else and that can affect all those estimations and, uh, and approximations. So because of that, we are going to learn stuff focused on urban water. But not only the quantity is the important part, the quality is also important. So in this course, we will have a very uh, big emphasis on stormwater quality. Why it is important? Just recently, uh, you know, all those environmental monitoring research uh, showed that there is a significant amount of pollutants in water bodies in urban areas. For example, think of using vehicles in the transportation infrastructure, uh, all the tire uh, rubs that are being used and they release the environment, they can carry certain types of pollutants. Each time you uh, push the brake pedal in your car, you're actually releasing heavy metals. And they accumulate on the surface of infrastructure for transportation, but each time you get a rain event, then those are all washed off to water bodies. Uh, those are just some these days known as typical stormwater pollutants, but most, more recently we learned about plastic and microplastics. Some microplastics are manufactured for particular uses like cosmetic products or abrasives in the industry, which are now very strict, but even larger pieces of plastic debris, they can break down to smaller pieces. And why it is important is because they are causing uh, problems to aquatic life through ingestions. And humans are eating those aquatic life as seafood. So imagine all these issues with 
uh, having all the pollutants going to stormwater system, uh, we need to be very careful and we need to be very cautious about discharging these huge amount of pollutants. So uh, to be able to uh, address all the quantity and quality issues, we need to have stormwater control measures. Of course, traditionally, stormwater control measures mostly focused on water quantity. meaning flood control. Another uh, aspects of traditional measures is that they were, were massive centralized infrastructure that today we call them as gray. So gray infrastructure. Why gray? Just think of the huge amount of concrete and steel in the uh, gray infrastructure, in the, like a detention basin, for example, or a, or a uh, storage tunnel that is conveying stormwater to a discharge point like a bay or uh, like a lake. And later, uh, engineers and scientists realized that these infrastructure themselves are very energy intensive, uh, expensive, and causing environmental issues themselves. So because of that, now we're dealing with the modern modern infrastructure which are called green infrastructure and that is actually one of the key areas of this course as we have it even in the title of the course the, another good thing for uh, green infrastructure is that not only it addresses the quantity, it also addresses the quality of stormwater because they are nature-based. So uh, if we design them properly so we can uh, route uh, an appropriate amount of stormwater through the infrastructure uh, by the natural processes that, the, like for example, a bioretention uh, or vegetated a swale or vegetated site has, then it can absorb um, a significant portion of the pollutants in the stormwater. So we learn uh, about all these uh, functions of green infrastructure and all the key aspects of stormwater management, regulations, techniques for hydrology and hydraulics to uh, have an idea of how much stormwater we're going to get for this particular location. Uh, of course, quality, aspects and then how to manage and how to control things.